So the finality of the 16-team SEC is coming to fruition in the 2024 season, as we just mentioned, but there is still the matter of figuring out the conference schedule. Now, currently, the SEC plays eight conference games per season with four non-conference games. Uh, the current SEC divisions are set up with seven teams. Each team plays six division opponents, along with one permanent and one rotating cross-division opponent, uh, which is why you have situations like Missouri only playing at Auburn once every 12 years, like they did you know, this past season, or the fact that Georgia has yet to play in College Station against Texas A&M. Now, ESPN and Disney did not uh, like that, especially with Oklahoma and Texas coming in. Uh, you know, if you, if you stick with divisions, uh, you stick to an eight-game schedule, you either lose traditional cross-division rivals uh, or you only have one rotating opponent, so you don't get, you know, a Florida versus Oklahoma or a Texas versus Georgia matchup, except maybe once every seven years, and it could be 14 years between trips to those opposing stadiums. So the TV partners want to see more matchups more often. Right. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey stated, uh, with the prominence of our universities, the strength of our football programs, the visibility of our teams, we should be rotating our teams through the schedule more frequently. And he's not wrong. Sankey stated that the SEC is focused on a single division model, which means uh, the two best teams based on conference record, not division winners, are going to play in the conference championship game every year. Now, he also mentioned this. Uh, he said, we've been intentional about discussing our ability to have annual rivalries played or rivalries played every other year. Uh, we haven't arrived at a destination between eight or nine games. The number of games will facilitate the number of annual games that take place. So is it an eight-game schedule or is it going to be a nine-game schedule going forward? That's the question everybody, uh, everybody wants to know. Eight games gives you one permanent opponent with seven rotating opponents, which means every school in the SEC will play every other school, both home and away, every four years. Uh, but with only one permanent rival, we either won't get uh, Alabama-Auburn or Alabama-Tennessee every year, or we don't get Texas-Oklahoma or Texas-Texas A&M every year. Georgia versus Florida or Georgia versus Auburn, you, you get the point, right? There's a lot of examples here for teams that have multiple yearly rivals. Uh, the other option is to move to a nine-game conference schedule. Uh, which would give you three permanent opponents and six rotating. Again, every school plays every other school, home and away, every four years. Uh, Nine-game schedule seems to be the best option, right? More traditional rivalries are protected every year, etc. But there are three issues with that, and we're going to dive into them right here. First, uh, the weaker teams in the league, and no offense to any of these teams that I'm going to name, but the Vanderbilts, the Kentuckys, the Mississippi States, etc., and it can be any team in any season, as evidenced by you know Auburn and A&M not making bowls last year. But only having three non-conference games each season makes it more difficult to make it to a bowl game. Now, there are contract incentives for coaches, uh, additional practices for players, and, and more that are tied into bowl game appearances. It's easier to get six wins with three cupcake non-conference games than with only two, which would be the case since all SEC members have agreed to play at least one P5 non-conference game each season. Now, second, there's the fact that with eight conference games, you are guaranteed four home games and four away games, which means you can schedule up to four non-conference games in those seasons. In some seasons, you would be guaranteed five away games every other year. Schools can earn quite a bit of revenue from home football games even if it's against FCS competition. So giving away home games has to be worth it uh, to some of the bigger schools, for sure. That leads us to number three. The current ESPN contract is only for eight conference games. That's what ESPN agreed to. Now, could the SEC convince ESPN to give them more money for eight additional conference games? Possibly. Uh, but how much more? If ESPN is not willing to pay more, what is the point in the move that everyone says creates more value? I mean, this, this deal is locked up for a little while. I believe it's through 2034. What's the point of creating more value right now if you're not going to see any of it? So let's look at what we got here. The three most likely permanent rivalry games, if the league does go with the 3-6 format, would be these. That 3-6 is funny. I, I just thought about the 3-6 Mafia. That's awesome. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I will always be Memphis, my friends. Uh, I'm going to read these off quickly. Florida would play Georgia, South Carolina, and LSU. Now, these are hypothetical, whatever, you know, toss your comments on, on who you think the rivals should be. Uh, but Florida would play Georgia, South Carolina, and LSU. Georgia would play Florida, South Carolina, and Auburn. South Carolina would play Georgia, Florida, and Kentucky. Kentucky would play Tennessee, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt. 
Tennessee would play Vanderbilt, Alabama, and Kentucky. Uh, Vandy would play Tennessee, Ole Miss, Kentucky. Alabama would play Auburn, Tennessee, and Mississippi State. Uh, Auburn would play Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi State. Ole Miss would play Mississippi State, LSU, and Vandy. Mississippi State would play Ole Miss, Auburn, and Alabama. LSU would play A&M, Ole Miss, and Florida. Texas would play A&M, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. A&M would play Texas, LSU, and Missouri. Oklahoma would play Texas, Arkansas, and Missouri. Arkansas would play Texas, Oklahoma, and Missouri. Missouri would play Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Texas A&M. Now, the most likely permanent rivalries for the 1-7 model would be this. And this is a lot easier to read off, by the way. Uh, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Auburn, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Oklahoma, Texas, A&M, LSU, Arkansas, Missouri, South Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, Vanderbilt. And so, yes, there are a lot of people that would be upset if we were to lose Alabama versus Tennessee or Texas versus Texas A&M or Auburn versus Georgia annually. But there is a workaround for this. When the ACC expanded in 2005 and in 2013, North Carolina and Wake Forest were placed in opposite divisions and given different protected rivalries, even though they had played annually from 1888 through 2007. Now, it stands a few years during the World Wars and whatnot. Uh, they had last played each other in 2015, but they went ahead and scheduled non-conference games against each other in 2019 and in 2020. Now, those ended up being played in 2021. Uh if the or excuse me, I guess that one game in 2020 ended up being played in 2021. Excuse me, uh, but if the SEC decides on a one-seven format, the easy solution would be for Alabama and Tennessee, or LSU and Auburn, or Georgia and whoever in the conference that wants to play each other, it, it, schedule a non-conference game in the years where you're not scheduled to play each other. Like it, it wouldn't count against the record. It would keep some schools happy that don't have multiple traditional rivals. Uh, that you know they feel like they have to keep protected. I seriously doubt Vanderbilt is going to be upset if they are not scheduled to play Georgia every year. Ole Miss might be okay with dodging Alabama every couple of years. There are ways to make this work uh, either way, but that's the solution to this whole thing. You go 1-7, and then those that want to keep those rivals, sick them. That's the one that you can do. Alabama, Tennessee, like, why not just schedule each other in the years that you're not scheduled to play? Like, yes, you will bump up to nine games. But if you were already going to do that anyway, well, you could just have one of these games that actually doesn't count against your conference record. That's my solution to this, is fix it by actually scheduling non-conference games. That's the easiest way to do this thing. Psst. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.